Hi friends, welcome to Thirmal classes. So today we will see the one of the important subject. So in entire GS that I can call it as Indian history. But here we will discuss modern Indian history. Because when I say Indian history, there is an ancient and there is a medieval and there is a modern Indian history. But we will begin with modern Indian history in our own style. Because I am not going to start modern Indian history from the advent of Europeans and all. I will begin modern Indian history in my own style which I learned modern Indian history because it is easy to understand if you understand the basics first. Now let us see in this lecture. What we will discuss in this lecture let us see. First of all we will begin Indian or modern Indian history from 1914 onwards. From 1914 onwards. Reason is very simple. 1914 onwards, I can call it as this is the beginning of World War One. World War One. In this, at the time of World War One, what happened in India? What kind of movement started, and how they are led to you know revolutions, and what kind of achievements achieved by the Indian freedom fighters? Indian freedom fighters. See, when you guys are learning history, we have to learn history. It is something like you know a web series. I mean to say there is one particular fellow, the story is different. One particular fellow story is different. One other group story is different. Like, like in the modern Indian history, there are many heroes, there are many, I can say, you know, you know, for, you know freedom fighters and many villains in the name of Britishers, and there are many other things we should know. That is the reason why. If anyone learning modern Indian history, learn it in bits and pieces in the name of or or I can say in, you know, in the form of a web series. You know, when you see the web series, what will happen? There is a different, different characters, different, different stories. The same thing like our modern India, different stories, different characters, different results, different enemies and different themes and different, uh, different information we have to learn in this particular modern Indian history. So as I begin from 1914 onwards, but we must know minimum, minimum basics what happened before 1914, at least uh, overview. At least overview you must know because whenever you are watching a movie, see whenever there is a title, they are showing something background, right? The same thing like, so if you want to understand modern Indian history in our style, which will be begin from 1914 onwards. If you want to understand those classes, you must have the minimum knowledge about modern Indian history, what has happened before 1914. Before 1914. In this lecture, I will try to introduce some few names, the few incidents, the few stories which was happened before 1914. Before 1914. So that what will happen? In tomorrow onwards, when I start from 1914 directly, so whenever you got a name, whenever you got anything else, you can easily understand the concept. Reason? I, in this lecture, I am explaining you the background, the background which has happened before 1914. Before 1914. So please do understand carefully because we are starting from middle, which is very, very interesting portion. So look at the concept today. Look at the concept today. The first thing is, as many people know, I think I am very sure in our 10th class, intermediate or I can say before 10th, 9th and all, you might come across this particular word. I can call it as 1857 revolt. 1857 revolt. When I say this 1857 revolt, it is the it is the one of the biggest revolt which was happened in India between Indians and Britishers. Between Indians and Britishers. Remember this point, I am telling all this in brief just to make you comfortable with our further lectures. With our further lectures. Again we will discuss each and everything in detail. Okay na? Yes. Let us the point. When I say 1857 revolt, generally what, what, what was happened in India you know? Before 1857 of India, India ruled by you know British East India Company. British East India Company. See, India ruled, India ruled by British East India Company before 1857. Before 
1857 but there is a fight between indians and britishers you know because of some reasons it might be military reasons it might be economic reasons it could be cultural reasons it could be a social reasons there are many reasons that we will discuss in the concerned topic at later point of time so in 1857 before india ruled by east india company but in the year of 1857 there is a fight between indians and britishers indians and britishers there is a fight due to this fight what will happen the crown crown means what head of british the british crown said that east india company you lost faith you lost faith on uh, among the indians i mean to say indians lost faith on east india company because in this 1857 revolt what has happened you know many britishers were killed many britishers were killed by the indians so obviously there is a huge human loss for the britishers right so obviously what british crown said that east india company you lost faith you lost faith from the indians or indians lost faith in east india company so whenever there is a loss of faith obviously there is no chance of ruling there is no chance of ruling so obviously what the british crown did you know after 1857 revolt the british crown cancelled east india company rule over the india cancelled east india company rule over the india which means what after 1857 revolt india ruled by directly british crown directly british crown so what is a simple point here just think normally 1857 before 1857 india ruled by east india company so in the year of 1857 there is a fight between indians and east india company because of this there is a huge human loss to british and indians lost faith on east india company obviously due to this fight between indians and east india company what british crown did east india company you lost you lost your faith on the land of india so obviously you are no you are no longer allowed to rule india that is the reason why after 1857 east india company rule over the india cancelled what is that cancelled and british crown took direct administration over the india so what is the point here very simple before 1857 india ruled by east india company after 1857 revolt india ruled by british crown british crown when i say british crown british queen or the british king are you getting the point this is something about 1857 revolt let me discuss one more point here after 1857 revolt what has happened the control over the indian administration the control over the indian administration is a carry forward by is carry forward by whom british crown in the name of british crown but still indians were not happy but still indians were not happy what is the indians goal indians always says that we don't want british rule we don't want british rule be it east india company be it crown rule but after 57 1857 east india company rule cancelled but the british crown is ruling right but still indians were not happy even with the rule of british crown over the india over the india that is the reason why many people started revolting against britishers revolting against britishers among all the first group i can call them as moderates what is that moderates do you know what do you mean by moderates when i say moderates they are not aggressive they are not aggressive they are very like cool and calm going persons they are always requesting the britishers please give me you know independence please give me some sort of powers they are always giving petitions to britishers for example even in your family see there is a you know you know four kids two kids or one kid something like very soft and very cool going they are called moderates because they never go in aggressive manner they are always requesting they are always pleasing they are always giving petitions but there are one more group which is more dangerous they are simply always aggressive in nature always fighting in spirit they are called as extremist they are called as what extremist 
When I say extremist, there is something like aggressive in nature, fighting in spirit. When I say moderates, they are not aggressive, they are always pleasing in nature, requesting in nature, they are always you know, asking or begging the Britishers regarding what they want, regarding what they want. So two groups, see even the humans, some people are soft, some people are aggressive. So that is there even in our you know, freedom fight. So the first group I can call them as moderates. For example, who are the moderates in our family? In our family, your father might be a moderate, means he is like a cool and calm going person. Maybe your brother is a moderate, he is a cool and calm going person. But in your family, your elder sister is extremist, let us say. She is not cool and calm going person. She is always fighting in spirit. Are you getting the point? Yes. When I say moderates, they are cool and calm going persons. We will discuss it later in detail. Just I am introducing the terms and the characters in this lecture so that you can understand the further lectures. Here, the moderates example, Gopalakrishna Gokale, Gopalakrishna Gokale and Dadabai Navaruji, Dinsha Vasha and there is a WC Benarji and there is MG Ranade and KT Telang and many other people who are there in this moderate group. In this moderate group, from today onwards, in our family, in our friends, whoever looks like very cool, requesting, calm going person, you simply call him as, you are look like a moderate. You look like what? Moderate. Are you getting the point? This is how we can memorize a concept for a longer time. For a longer time. Next, after this moderates, in 19, sorry, in 1885, something was happened. That is called, that is called formation of Indian National Congress. Formation of Indian National Congress. What is this Indian National Congress? It is a group of members. It is an association to get the independence. To get the independence or generally to demand the Britishers regarding our needs. Regarding our needs. But let me tell you, before 1885, there are many small organizations. There are many small organizations. For example, Bengal organizations, peasant organizations, there are many small small organizations. See, whenever there is a small small organizations, is it possible to get a good results? Not possible practically. That is the reason why in 1885, all the small organizations were grouped together and we started something called Indian National Congress. Indian National Congress. In which year it is started Indian National Congress? Your answer should be in the year of 1885. Again, we have to discuss in detail about this Indian National Congress and their meetings and all in further lectures once we are done with the present lectures. Just here I am introducing the names, characters. What is that? Characters I am introducing here. So what is happened in 1885? Indian National Congress was formed. Indian National Congress was formed. What do you mean by this? It is a group of members, a group of organizations combined together just to demand our needs from the Britishers, from the Britishers. But generally, do you know what this Indian National Congress will do? This Indian National Congress will, will, you know, will conduct meetings. It generally conducts the meetings you know, once in a year. Once in a year, that too for three days. For example, every year, December 29, 30, 31st mostly. So they will meet every year in different, different places and they will go for some discussions and they will take some resolutions and they will begging the Britisher saying that please give me that, please do me this and all. That is how Indian National Congress is going to be functioned initially. So what has happened initially? Every year they meet at some place and they, you know, they discuss something, they you know, they will get some output over there and they will ask the Britisher saying that Sir, please provide all these needs whatever Indian wants. That is the initial work of Indian National Congress. Remaining things we will see in further lectures only introducing the characters here. After this, there is one more phase, very very important. That is extremist phase. This is what second one, moderate phase. Only cool and calm going persons requesting, begging, petitions, only these kind of, no aggression, no violence. But still, so if you remember guys, 
first of all each and every person is a cool and calm going person whenever going cool and calm sometimes works may not be done may not be done obviously what you will do you simply lost your patience you become aggressive you become aggressive the same thing happened in the indian industry first of all in this moderate phase they are always uh, requesting the britishers pleasing the britishers giving petitions to britishers see when you are requesting pleasing and giving petitions to britishers will they react to you no they never react means whatever the achievements done by the moderates they are the you know, those achievements are unhappy means they not achieved much they achieved very very less so obviously with the work of moderates the extremists become disappointed means whatever the achievements done by the moderates which is not happy for each and every person obviously what will happen some of the persons took the arms some of the persons doesn't believe the moderates kind of struggle moderate kind of struggle that is pleasing petition and all and some of the person says that we have to fight with the britishers we have to beat the britishers we have to rob the britishers properties and weapons and all and they become somewhat violent in nature that group called as extremist phase that group is called what extremist when i say extremist they are not pleasing britishers they are not requesting britishers they are not giving petitions to britishers they are simply what they want they simply fight the british and they'll get it they simply rob the you know the revenue of britishers they simply rob i can say they simply theft the british weapons means they're not requesting they're fighting and they're getting or they're killing britishers so this is what the work of extremist what is that extremist why extremist came into picture because the moderates moderates what they achieved that is that is not made happy everyone so the moderate achievements are very very less people are not happy with their achievement that is the reason a new group emerged that group is called extremist what is that extremist means they are always revolutionary in nature they are always fighting in nature they are you they know they always quarrel in nature they never request the britishers they only demand they only fight so let us see who are for example this extremist leaders you know lala lajpat rai bala gangadhar tilak Bipin Chandra Paul and there is Arvind Ghosh and many other includes includes our Bhagat Singh, Bhagat Singh. So there are many other leaders. Those simply took the took the weapons against Britishers and they called as extremist. What is that? Extremist or the militants? I can call them as what? Militants. See, militants never go for discussions. They always believe in war. So obviously, always this extremist. or militants they believe in war they believe in what war if you carefully observe see mindsets some persons are moderate cool calm going requesting persons but some persons are not cool calm going persons they are always fighting in spirit they are demanding they are fighting they are robbing are you getting the point means in our history there are some persons cool going <coughs> there are some persons those who believe in fighting and demanding spirit they are called moderates they are called extremist or militant group extremist or militant group next after this something was happened in india which is very very important for our freedom fight that is bengal division in the year of 1905 bengal division in the year of 1905 what is this bengal division generally let us see so if you see carefully before 1905 So Bengal is one province. Bengal is one largest province, largest area, largest state in India where Hindu-Muslim unity is very very strong, very very strong. Even if you see in history, major movements, major movements, major revolutionary changes begins from Bengal. Begins from where? Bengal, and there the Hindu and Muslim unity is. very very strong very very strong because before independence at this time of 1905 and before that even the bangladesh is called as east bengal and today's bengal is called west bengal are you getting the point this is entirely called one area where hindu muslims are very very strong very good unity and you know the most of the you know revolts in india against the britishers 
were begun at a place called Bengal. So Britishers felt that this is a dangerous area for us, where the Hindu-Muslim unity is very strong. At the same time, every movement beginning there itself. Then Britishers thought that why can't we go for divide and rule policy? Divide and rule. You see, guys, sometimes in your life, you and your friend is very very stronger. But in between someone will come, they will go for divide and rule policy, they will simply break your relations. The same thing done by the Britishers, they want to break Hindu-Muslim unity in India. They want to break the Bengal itself, reason it is the origin of every revolt, every movement in India. That is the reason what will happen in 1905, the Bengal was divided by Britishers. The Bengal was divided by Britishers into two. One is East Bengal, another one is West Bengal. You see the logic here. In East Bengal, Muslim majority people will be there. In West Bengal, Hindu majority people will be there. See how strategically they divided our unity. As East Bengal having more number of Muslims, they divide as a separate state. West Bengal Hindus, they, they divide as a separate state. Means indirectly, they are dividing the unity between Hindu and Muslims at that point of time, right? At the same time, when they divide the Bengal, the number of movements which were originated are also decreased so that they can rule India for a longer time, for a longer time. This is how the Britishers playing their role each and every time with Indians. Are you getting the point? This is how the Britishers ruled India for a longer time that is called divide and rule policy. Are you getting the point? This is what happened in Bengal division 1905. Again, there is a big story regarding this that we will discuss concern topic. This is only introduction to the characters for our future lectures because I am beginning with from you know I am beginning with middle of the subject. Next thing, if you see as here what will happen? Bengal division happened, right? Bengal division along with Bengal division, they also broke Hindu Muslim unity. Hindu Muslim unity obviously what will happen next year 1906 itself there is a separate party for muslims that is called muslim league what is that muslim league see the connection my dear 1905 bengal division was happened means hindu and muslim two groups were divided practically so obviously when they divided britishers encouraged the muslims britishers what encouraged the Muslims saying that you can create your own political party that is called Muslim League. Means with the help of Britishers, Muslims started a separate thing called 1906 that is Muslim League. Means what here Britishers doing you know, they first divided Hindu Muslim unity and next they encouraged the Muslims just to start their own political parties. So that what will happen? So when Britishers increasing Muslims, Obviously, they become against the Hindus, right? And there is a dispute between Hindu and Muslims, right? So that British can you know, rule India for a longer time. You see, whenever there is no unity, they can rule India for a longer time. Whenever there is unity among the Indians, it is a difficult to Britishers to rule. That is the reason why they divided Bengal and they encouraged the Muslim leaders to create their own political party. And they started 1906 Muslim League at Dhaka. Muslim league at Dhaka, present Bangladesh because East Bengal, right? East Bengal. So that is how in 1906 Muslim League was created. This is also just because of Britishers encouraging the leaders, some of the leaders of Muslims. So why this is created again? Again to divide Hindu Muslim unity, my dear, not more than this. Next thing, 1907. In 1907, again, what will happen? You know, very, very important this. In 1907, what happened, you know? So, there is a split in Indian National Congress. If you see earlier, when I say Indian National Congress, it is consisting both moderates, it is consisting extremists. Both were the Indian National Congress. For example, in your family, so two brothers are very aggressive. They are called as extremists. Two brothers and sisters are moderates. Means all of them are staying at one home, right? Yes. So, when Indian National Congress created, it is consisting moderates as well as extremists. Both are staying together in single umbrella or single roof. I can call it as Indian National Congress. Indian National Congress. But what happened, you know, 
there is 1907 in 1907 due to ideological differences due to ideological differences between moderates and extremists see my dear the moderates ideology is very different from the ideology of extremist or the militant group so when both ideology is different they cannot stay together for a longer time even you can see in your personal life whenever the two persons or two friends ideology is different or two couple ideology is different they never going to stay for a longer time the same thing was happened here also so in 1907 indian national congress uh, split indian national congress what split into two groups split into two groups when it is split into two groups again britishers become more advantageous why no unity among the indians they can rule india for a longer time right they can rule india for longer time so this is very very important what happened 1907 indian national congress were split into two groups were split into two groups at a place called surat session because i told you right indian national congress conducting every year one meeting at one one place right yes sir no yes so in the year of 1907 indian national congress meeting was conducted at surat conducted at what surat so there there is a differences arose between moderates and extremists obviously there is a split in indian national congress split in indian national congress means what again the unity among the indians broken obviously the british ruled india for a longer time always british wants always british wants divide and rule india divide and rule india that is their single strategy next thing again after the 1907 indian national congress split into two groups in 1908 tilak arrested he is one of the extremist tilak is very very important person among all the national leaders in our freedom fight 1908 tilak arrested and he was imprisoned with six years jail life six years jail life one of the great hero arrested in 1908 1908 and he was arrested and he was sentenced to jail for a period of six years six years remember this point six years because from there onwards we will start our lectures at the last 1909 british brought some reforms in india what are the reforms not required at present for us that we will see one by one just i am introducing the characters in this lecture because of our future lectures if you know these characters in future lectures i can make you understand easily my dear so please do concentrate each and everything next at the last what will happen you know when 1905 when 1905 bengal division was occurred many people revolted against britishers saying that we don't want bengal division we don't want what bengal division we started many movements see 1905 when bengal division was occurred against bengal division many indians started many movements out of all one is swadeshi movement another one is vande matra movement so all these movements were started by the indians just to oppose bengal division to oppose bengal division because indians don't want bengal division but british somehow did it so by saying some kind of you know cock and bull stories are you getting the point yes but see indians are very very strong in this point they don't want bengal division that is the reason they fought with the britishers almost for five to six years that is from 1905 to 1911 indians fought with britishers saying that we don't want bengal division we want bengal as a single state as a single province but finally indians won in this particular moment and in the year of 1911 in the year of 1911 british are finally 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 bent their head and they says that we are going for bengal reunion we are going for what bengal reunion means what in 1905 bengal divided into two parts but in 1911 the two parts again merged again merged into single state called as bengal that is called in 1911 bengal reunion bengal reunion because indians fought with the britishers from 1905 to 1911 finally indians achieved this and they caught bengal reunion but the britishers are very very clever here see indians are very clever 
At the same time, Britishers were also clever. Tit for tat. What Britishers did, they simply changed capital from Kolkata to Delhi. Kolkata to Delhi. Reason is why Kolkata there in West Bengal. West Bengal is a source of always many fights, many kind of revolts, many kind of you know you know movements and all. So we can't run the show in West Bengal as a capital that is Kolkata. So intellectually, what Britishers did? The Bengal reunion. So Bengal was reunion in 1911, but the Britishers simply changed their capital from Kolkata to Delhi. Kolkata to Delhi. So note on this point. So Delhi became capital of India since 1911. Since 1911. Are you getting the point right? So this is something what happened. What happened in the background of Indian history. These are all just the characters I introduced to you just for our future lectures understanding. If you know these characters, you can understand our future lectures in a better way. So please make a note of this. So please do understand this and we will read Indian history into bits and pieces, bits and pieces like a web series. One story, one web series, keep aside. Another story, another web series, keep aside. Learn this so that you can enjoy the concept for a longer time. You can memorize even it. I hope you understood this concept and in from next class onwards, we will begin with directly 1914, which is called the World War One. World War One. Remember this point. Tilak arrested in the year of 1908. Tilak arrested in the year of 1908 and he was sentenced to jail for how many years? Six years. See, guys, 1908 to 1914, how many years? Six years. Again, Tilak released from jail in the year of 1914. 1914, the hero arrived from jail. At the same time, remember this point. What is the point? In which year Bengal division was happened? 1905. Remember all this, then we will see each and every topic in an interesting manner. So that's all for the day. I hope you understood the concept. Don't worry, you will understand the concept while we are going in a forward way. So thank you all.